Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are so thrilled and honored to have back Dinesh D'Souza. Dinesh is a world famous filmmaker, a best selling author, a political pundit without peer on national television. And he has a new movie out called Infidel that we're going to talk about today. Uh, welcome back, Dinesh. Good to be on the show. Thanks so much for joining us. So let's jump right into it. Um, Infidel's got a very famous uh, lead actor, Jim Caviezel. Uh, I understand that um, you put this all together. It raises some very important issues. Um, the first one that I think is the most critical to talk about is there are thousands of cases of brutality uh, by Muslims against non-Muslims for a variety of uh, reasons. Um, why did it take till you making this movie in 2020 to bring this to the forefront of people's consciousness? Well, the reason that um, I became involved in this project, my wife, uh, Debbie, uh, partner with me on it, is because we felt that Hollywood makes not only just one type of movie, uh, with the same type of villains, the same type of plots. Uh, and these are plots that actually often bear no resemblance to the real world. So they'll make a bunch of movies on terrorism and the terrorist is always living on some island somewhere or he's Russian or Eastern European. Even though there's Islamic terrorism going on all over the world, uh, it's almost as if that topic is taboo. And to even approach it, even in a fair-minded way, gets you like labeled an Islamophobe. So we wanted to make an intelligent movie that looked at these, the clash of civilizations, the clash of faith, a man standing up for his beliefs. Um, and so we can kind of concocted, Debbie and I did the basic outlines of a plot. And then we brought in a very talented Iranian American screenwriter, uh, a guy named Cyrus Noraste, who had made a good movie called The Stoning of Soraya M about, uh, about a woman who's sort of falsely accused of adultery and stoned in a small Islamic village, a very riveting and memorable movie, but for a small audience, a kind of a niche movie. And we said, hey, you know, uh, Cyrus, we've got a, a mainstream political thriller for you um, that is for the general audience uh, and reflects patriotic values an affirmation of religious freedom, takes a hard look at issues of Islam. And so that's what, that's what Infidel is. It does all that. And, so, you know, what's remarkable is the audience loves it. it in the theater, it got 90% from the audience, but it did pretty well with the critics. And that came to me as a surprise because the critics very often are very much on the political left. They are habituated to bashing my documentaries. So I was, was quite surprised and pleased that with Infidel, the critics liked it. Well, yeah, I, I get that. But the part that I, I'm a little confused about is why is it that this is such an important topic? It's such uh, relevance today with what's going on around the world, and I include the United States in it. Why, does a, why doesn't a massive Hollywood studio like Paramount or Miramax go make a movie like this instead of independent filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza having to make it? Well, the reason is that uh, Hollywood, although it's a pretty large operation, is a very small incestuous place. Uh, it's a small community. Um, there is a left-wing bias in all the major cultural institutions of America, so academia, for example, or the media. But academia and the media are positively gargantuan compared to Hollywood. Uh, a small community stretching across a you know, handful of blocks in Los Angeles where everybody knows each other and pulls their children into the business. And so it's very easy in Hollywood to develop a herd mentality. And it's also very easy to punish people who fall out of line. There is a conservative group in Hollywood called Friends of Abe, Abe being Abe Lincoln. But interestingly, this, this group meets in secret. And there are actors and screenwriters who literally come to meetings in disguise because they have a, a career in Hollywood and they don't want to be blacklisted. So Hollywood has a blacklist. Uh, it's really unbelievable. But this is why their movies reflect this kind of parochial mentality, because it's become a very parochial, intolerant place. Well, your star, who's a major star in Hollywood, Jim Caviezel, 
he went on Mike Huckabee's show after the movie was completed, and he made an interesting point that Americans seem to be willing to stand up in general for religious freedom, but Christians don't seem to be standing up saying, hey, stop killing Christians around the world just for being Christians. Um, do you agree that your film is, is casting a light on that and asking the question, why aren't Christians standing up for Christians? We certainly did want to highlight issues of religious freedom, not just abroad, but also here in America. The film doesn't deal with coronavirus directly, but it is striking that the most severe restrictions on religious freedom have been justified by appealing to the virus. And churches get singled out. So, for example, one of the points that Justice uh, Gorsuch made in the recent Supreme Court opinion when he was talking about Governor Cuomo, he goes, listen, Governor Cuomo, all the stuff that you like, which is bicycle shops and gyms and health food stores uh, and Walmart, all the places that you seem to approve of that are part of, you may call it the secular lifestyle, all those things are allowed. And then the things that you don't like, like religious freedom, are singled out for you know, as being kind of non-essential. Uh, and so this is the point here that religious freedom has now become a real issue in America, not, not less than in other parts of the world. Uh, one of the things that Cyrus, the director and the writer brought to the film was the issue of the underground Christian community in Iran. The way that the plot unfolds, there's a kind of Christian underground that meets in secret that helps the main character, the American, Kavizel, who finds himself trapped in a prison in Iran. Uh, and uh, so evidently the film is being talked about and sort of distributed, you may say, um, below the surface in Iran today. Um, and I think this gives it an, an added uh, urgency and relevance. Well, you raise an interesting point about the fact that Hollywood and the media are on one side and truth and freedom seems to be on the other side. And we've had a really clear example of that while your movie is being distributed two horrific possible um, mass murderers had they been given the opportunity, um, both Iranian members of the IRGC, the Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard Corps have just been killed. And instead of being applauded as not uh, living members of the human race anymore, the left in the United States has just gone crazy condemning anybody that's supportive of their elimination from Trump to Israel and so on. Um, what happened to the idea of fairness without a religious proclivity being part of the equation? In other words, these two guys are big mass killers, and yet they're being mourned, and their victims just aren't. We're seeing a very strange phenomenon uh, worldwide, which is to say the um, kind of um, strange bedfellows alliance between the secular left in the West and radical Islam. Now, on the first glance, this would seem inexplicable because the radical Muslims don't approve of much of the agenda of the secular left. They're anti-gay. Uh, they don't support transgenders or any of that. Um, and so how could the most illiberal people in the world be un united somehow with the left? Well, what is their common basis? Well, their common basis isn't just antagonism to Trump or antagonism to current American foreign policy. But let's look, for example, at one of the Ayatollah Khomeini's biggest slogans when he first came to power in 1979. They would burn the American flag and they would say, death to America. Well, all you have to do today is look at Antifa or Black Lives Matter on an American campus or in major cities like Portland. What are they doing? Burning the American flag and chanting death to America. So you've got two camps that seem to have nothing to do with each other, uh, but it's very clear they identify America, not just Trump's America, but America itself as their ideological opponent. And this is the basis for their political unity. Boy, is that the truth. And it's very saddening that even the Democrats at the top of the ticket and the top of the party won't condemn it. For some reason, that's some kind of First Amendment um, free speech demonstration. So your movie comes out. Um, there was um, 
commentary by you on Laura Ingram's show uh, that, and you mentioned this a minute ago, that most terrorists in movies are, you know, um, Russian or they live on an island. You forgot the volcano ones. There's always a villain that lives under a fake volcano. Um, and I don't know, I, I just haven't seen that many villains living in volcanoes. But the truth is there's no terrorists like the real world terrorists, like your movie talks about. Is that a religious thing? Are we just bending over backwards to kiss the tushy of a religion that wants us wiped out? What do you make of that? Well, you've noticed that the left, uh, this goes back even to 9-11, has objected vehemently to the phrase Islamic terrorist. They don't like the, the bringing together of those two words. Uh, they, they don't mind terrorist, extremist, but somehow they want to disconnect the idea of Islam from the idea of terrorism. Uh, even though uh, it is a fact uh, that the Islamic the terrorists who took down, for example, the World Trade Center um, and did those bombings of the Pentagon uh, were motivated by their own testimony by Islam. If you ask them, why do you do it? They'd be like, well, Allah told us to do it or we're doing it in the name of Allah. And, and this is true of terrorist acts in many countries. So no one is saying that the majority of terrorists, let's say worldwide, are Muslim. Uh, but it is, it is true that Islam is an important motivation for terrorist acts around the world. And you'd have to say that this is not true uh, of other religions. Uh, so, for example, you could find someone who's, a, who's done a terrorist bombing and say, well, that guy happens to be a Christian. But even in that case, it's not that the guy was motivated by Christianity. He's not doing it for a Christian purpose. It could be, for example, that he objected to what happened in Waco, objected to Ruby Ridge. There's some other political motive generally. So I think what's happening is there's an attempt to evade the simple truth that Islam today, today, is a motivation for radical people to do to commit terrorist acts. Uh, and in, in the movie Infidel, we also deal with the issue of honor killing in America. Uh, and there have been reports of honor killing in America, again, in the name of Islam, the idea here being uh, that family members who are seen to sort of betray Islamic values bring shame on the parents who therefore sort of take it out, you may say, through violence on sometimes their own children. So this rather shocking practice, and again, has been really downplayed in the media for the same reason, to sort of politically protect the idea of Islam. And from my perspective as a father of a daughter, I'm horrified by what you just said, not because you're saying it, but because it's absolutely 100% true and it's pervasive. In the movie itself, there's a chilling line when the bad guy, uh, Ramzi, who is a Hezbollah terrorist, says to Kavizel's character, they're going to shoot him with a firing squad. I won't say what happened and ruin it. He says, we're not afraid to die. That's what we're going to win. That's why we're going to win. We're not afraid to die. That's why we're going to win. I'm not afraid either. And I know from my extensive uh, history with uh, and in Israel, that's what the Israelis hear from the Palestinian leaders all the time. How do you defeat, defeat a culture like that that can't wait to blow themselves up? I think we have to ask whether this is true. Uh, it certainly is true of these young men who get recruited um, by the Iranian mullahs and by others to you know, go blow yourself up. You're going to have immediate entree into paradise and so on. But it's interesting that not a single member, to my knowledge, of the Iranian Revolutionary Council, the Iranian parliament, I notice that those guys aren't blowing themselves up. You don't see any mullahs driving their cars into a cement wall. Uh, they seem to be very concerned with staying in power, protecting their safety, enhancing their sphere of influence and so on. So it looks to me like they are conning these young people. And, and making them, if you will, their, um, their pawns of martyrdom, if you will. But they themselves have no intention of being martyrs. 
And I think in a weird way, what that means is that a country like Iran can be deterred because those guys, it's not true that the Iranian parliament goes, oh, sure, wipe us out. It's, we're, we're, we're waiting for you to do it. We'd be happy for you to do it. No, they're not happy for us to do it. They're clinging on to their life and their power and their possessions the same as everybody else. So Infidel has this important message. And as you've said, it's a message that um, I don't know if the mainstream is ready for, but they need to see it. Obviously, uh, mainstream Hollywood has avoided it, the subject matter like the plague. Um, do you think Infidel could be the start of a dam breaking and the truth finally coming out, uh, whether it's fictionalized or documentarily produced to tell the truth about what we in the West are facing? Yeah, I mean, um, Infidel is a feature film. In that sense, it's different than the five other movies I've produced, all of which are political documentaries. And the important thing about a feature film is it casts light on a subject, but it doesn't, in a sense, take a position. It's an, a feature film is a story. It's a narrative. It helps you to think about things, but it's also an entertainment. What You want to enjoy of uh, being part of this drama. And we have a wonderful international cast, Claudia Carvin from Australia, a uh, Turkish actor playing the bad guy, very strong, diverse cast of people uh, treating this international topic. So the best you can do with the feature film is you want people to sort of connect the fictional world that the film draws them into with the real world that they live in. But I think it's important for those of us who are sort of, you may almost say, who don't like the propagandistic messages of Hollywood to make different types of movies. And we're hoping, my wife Debbie and I, that Infidel is sort of the first uh, of a mainstream feature film uh, that is um, different uh, in its values and emphasis than the typical fare that one gets from Hollywood. And I would um, amend your comment, if I may, by saying you're incredibly brave, as is your wife, to go out there and make a statement like this, knowing certain people are going to trash it just because it doesn't meet the mainstream media narrative. Bless you for making it. It is such an important message. It's one of the messages that we do weekly shows on here at American Truth Project because we think the message is that important, which is just tell the truth about what we're dealing with. Well, I appreciate that very much. You know, we don't have the typical Hollywood sort of infrastructure of massive studios and so on. So we run a small team. It's a dozen of us or so who get these films made. Uh, and we wanted to make this film at a level that could compete with the best that Hollywood has to offer. In other words, not make a niche movie that people feel, oh, I got to go out and support Dinesh for, because he's making movies, I want to encourage him. No, I want to make movies that are comparable to really good movies that, that Hollywood makes um, and, and do it in a sensible way without actually spending the 40 or $50 million that they spend uh, often on movies that, that, that are a bust. Uh, so we do these movies um, at, at a relative modest uh, price, but do it in a way that makes economic sense. Um, and then we distribute them all over the world. Well, Dinesh, tell our audience how they can watch Infidel. So the website is called infidel911.com, infidel911.com. And that lists all the various platforms. And there's a multitude of them, including, by the way, cable platforms. So the movie is now just out for DVD and also for download and purchase. So you can buy the movie by downloading it. Very soon, it'll be available to rent. So you'll be able to download it and rent it for the day or two days and watch it. Uh, with your family. It's perfect for the Christmas season. Couldn't be more timely. It's a story of a man standing up for his faith. So it's well-timed as a Christmas movie, and it's also a really great gift to drop into someone's stocking. I like it, and ATP recommends it. Go watch Dinesh D'Souza's new movie. It's fantastic. Thank you very much for coming on, and I hope you'll come back soon. Uh, for those of you that haven't subscribed yet to our text message alert system, you can do so easily by simply sending the message truth to 88202, push send, you'll be subscribed. You'll get to see Dinesh D'Souza with us and everybody else a couple times a week, all in the palm of your hand and always for free. Thanks again, Dinesh, and thank you for joining us on ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum.